Okay, by now you've done a whole bunch of derivative problems using this limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, and there was all sorts of ugly algebra and lots of places to make mistakes. Um, have we had enough of those? Yes. Okay, so should we learn a shortcut? Yes. All right, before we learn a shortcut, you have to tell me um, where this f of x plus h minus f of x comes from. What kind of equation did that kind of originate from? The slope equation. The slope equation, right? That regular old y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, blah, blah, blah. Um, but now we have f of x plus h, and the limit as h goes to 0. What is this h thing? The hop. The hop. OK, so the h thing is the hop. And how small do we want the hop? Infinitely small. Infinitely small. Very fancy vocabulary going on over here. OK, so that we can actually find the slope of the tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change. But we're done with that equation for now. It's nice that you all understand it. Now we're going to go on to shortcuts. So f of x, if f of x equals x squared, now you're just going to notice a pattern. I'm positive you'll get it pretty soon. Um, and we did a bunch of x squared-ish equations. If f of x is equals to x squared, then the derivative of that is 2x, Okay, which we've done a bunch of times or variations of that. If f of x equals x cubed, f prime of x equals 3x squared. If f of x, oops, box, teacher's very picky about these things. If f of x equals um, x to the fourth, f prime of x is going to equal 4x to the third. OK. Let me do one more. Do you think you're seeing a pattern? Yes. All right, so I'm going to ask you the next one. OK, let's say f of x equals x to the fifth. What do you think f prime of x is going to be? Uh, maybe 5x to the fourth. 5x to the fourth. So where'd the 5 come from? The exponent. The exponent, OK. And why is it a 4 now? I subtracted 1. OK, because that's what happened on all the other ones? Yes. OK, good call. All right, so let's just do one more random huge one and see if we can do it. f of x equals x to the 212th. Is that insane or what? OK, we have no idea what that graph looks like, do we? It's an even function, so we actually might know something. But all right, so come on, write your f prime of x. OK, with a box and everything. Oh, I forgot my box up here. I should put the box up there. OK, so the pattern is like that in your book, depending on what book it is. It says x to the n. The derivative of x to the n is nx to the n minus 1, or it might be an a, or whatever. But you see the pattern. We're all good. Now let's look at something we've done using that, or some variation of it. If f of x equals x squared minus 7. I guess usually we did something like minus 9, because I like difference of squares so much, right? OK, so if we'll do a little little thought, thought bubble over here. If this is x squared, what does x squared minus 9 look like? Um, x squared just moved down. OK, nine. x squared just moved down 9. Let's, let's say that this is moved down 9, and that they're the exact same shape, which actually, for me, those look pretty close to the exact same shape. So, and what does the derivative give us? Oh, OK, that too. f prime of x equals 2x. What on the function does the, um, the derivative give us? The slope. The slope of the, the tangent line. OK, so if over here there's some positive slope on x squared, I should probably label what I'm drawing here, x squared, x squared minus 9, OK? then at that exact same x value on x squared minus 9, it's going to have the exact same slope. So the 9 ends up being irrelevant. There's three different ways you can look at how that 9 goes away. The first one is student's favorite in my class, which is not terribly mathy, but it's somebody, several people's favorite. Let me put a box on this. 
is they like this thing where they bring down the, the exponent and stuff. So some people write it like this. f of x equals x squared minus 9. And we talked briefly a couple times about coefficient variable exponent. I need to zoom out on this coefficient variable exponent, don't I? Oh well. We talked briefly about coefficient variable exponent several times. Did it just turn blue? Now it's white again. That was really weird. Okay, so <laughs> the x squared minus 9, some people like to write in some invisible parts. Um, they can put in an x to the 0, which is the same thing as 1. doesn't change anything, except then you can bring down that 0. You can do the same stuff. You can do f prime of x equals 2x to the 1, because we took 1 away from 2 minus, we bring down the 0 times the 9, x to the 0 minus 1. But this has a 0 in it, so it just is nothing anyway. So f prime of x equals 2x. The way I prefer to look at it, actually, is to just look at the function, the function f of x equals minus 9. OK, f of x equals minus 9. What is that? A horizontal line. A horizontal line, which my lines aren't very horizontal anywhere, but we're going to pretend like it's a horizontal line. And what's the slope of that horizontal line everywhere? Zero. Zero. If the slope of the horizontal line is zero, it doesn't can't really have a tangent line, but its rate of change everywhere is what? Zero. If its rate of change everywhere is zero, what's its derivative? Zero. All right. So f prime of x equals 0 for this. f prime of x is 0 for any constant function. Your book probably has fancy ways of showing you that. I just showed you a very unfancy way. Let's do a couple more examples. It can't possibly be quite this simple, can it? Let's do f of x equal 2x to the fourth minus 3x. OK, so 2x to the fourth minus 3x. It's not just um, the whatever it was before, x with an exponent. Now there's these coefficients in front of it. But this is in the form of coefficient variable exponent, which you're going to hear me say, and you're going to see that orange piece of paper probably more times than you want to. But that's OK. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this guy one piece at a time. f prime of x equals. What do we want to do with this coefficient? Or no, that's not a coefficient. What is that thing? Exponent. Exponent. What do we want to do with the exponent? Bring it down. Bring it down. OK, come on down, exponent. There he is. What do we do with the coefficient? Multiply. Multiply? Yeah, just like leave it there. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to stay there. OK, then we got x. Then what do we do with the exponent every time we take the derivative? Subtract 1. Subtract 1. I'm going to actually show that on this one, because a lot of people need to do it, especially when they get uglier, which of course they're going to get uglier. Then for this one, you've got minus, what, what's the exponent here? 1. 1. I'm going to write my invisible 1. 1. Bam. There we go. OK. So we're going to bring down that guy, right? The 1, which some people don't need to show this step. We're going to multiply it by the 3. And we're going to do x to the what? 1 minus 0. 1 minus what? 1 minus 1. You got ahead of yourself again, didn't you? <laughs> She's always so fast with all this addition stuff. I always mess it up. 1 minus 1. Getting to the answer already. Some people don't need all the steps, and she doesn't need all the steps. I need all the steps sometimes. OK. So this is kind of ugly, so we're going to write it pretty, and then put a box around it, and then move on to the next thing. Equals 8x to the 3 minus 1 times 3 is 3, x to the 1 minus 1 is x to the 0. Well, now I have to rewrite it again. All these steps. Some people need them, some people don't. You know who you are. Do what you need to do. Because x to the 0 is just 1. Now I'm going to look at that guy another way. Because this 3, putting that 1 there, was kind of weird. Let's look at a basic equation. f of x equals um, 2x minus 4. OK, so we can graph that. Boom, boom, um, minus 4, slope of 2, looks something like that, right? OK, w what does the derivative tell us about a function? What does the derivative tell us? The slope and the 
rate of change. Yeah, the slope and the rate of change. So what's the slope of this thing? Two. Two. Okay, well, two. If the slope of it is two, then the rate of change is two, and it stays two all the time, right? Yes. Okay, so um, for this one, where I would like you all to be, like, very, very soon, is just looking at the bank. Oh, it's a line. It has slope two, so the derivative is two. We're done. No thinking whatsoever. I do know that some of you aren't going to do that. You're going to go, you're going to want all your little steps, you people who like your steps. And you're going to go 2x minus 4, and you're going to write in the invisible stuff, 1 and x to the 0, because all you're doing there is nothing except adding some red ink. Red ink's usually bad, though, isn't it? <laughs> okay. All right, whatever. And then you're going to go through the process, and, and I've had people go through this process and be okay. And they go, I wish I could just skip steps, but if you can't, then don't. It's fine. So bring down that one, 1 times 2x to the 1 minus 1 minus 0 times 4x to the 0 minus 1. 0 times anything is 0. So f prime of x equals 2x to the 0. What's x to the 0? 1. All right. So f prime of x equals 2. Whew! All that to really just say the slope of that line was 2. But some people need the steps. Some people don't. It's all good. Okay. You know it's going to get uglier. Everything always gets uglier. This is calculus. Okay. So um, let's look at f of x equals the square root. All right, so this guy is not in coefficient variable exponent form, coefficient variable exponent form. So we need him to be in. What form is this guy in? Radical. Radical form. And we want to change him to move him over to coefficient variable exponent form. So if you remember from the previous video or for the previous class, this is um, we can write a couple invisible things. What power is this x being taken to? The first. The first power, and what's the root here? Two. Two. The square root has this invisible two, a square root. So if we just rewrite, and that is the whole big trick here that's going to help you a lot, this. We're not taking the derivative, we're just rewriting it in coefficient variable exponent form. We rewrite this as x to the first power with the second root taken. If you remember from the previous video, that was the x to the p power root equals x to the power over root. And we talked about how there's power inside the house and roots outside the house, especially if there's ivy growing. Somebody said that in class last time. So anyway, now let's derive. So we already rewrote this. Now we just need to derive it. Rewrite d derive. And we're going to do a bunch more of these in the next video. f prime of x equals, what do we do with the 1 half? Bring it down. Bring it down. Now one other thing is for coefficient variable exponent, we can put an invisible coefficient in front of it. Some people like it, some people don't, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is going to be um, 1 half brought down times 1 x to the 1 half minus, what do we need when we subtract uh, fractions? Common denominator. Common denominators. The denominator here is 2, so we're going to subtract 2 halves. So that's pretty ugly. Let's try to make it a little bit prettier. This is going to be 1 half x to the 1 half minus 2 halves is minus 1 half. This is the derivative in coefficient variable exponent form. You might also see it sometimes in radical form, which is 1 half still. x to the negative, so it's in the bottom. 1 half is a square root. So either way is fine with me. This is the coefficient variable exponent form, and especially when we take higher derivatives, that's the easier way to have it. So more rewrites in the next video. Thanks for watching.